Alright, it's time to get those animations I made last time into the Unity project. I imported the frames in groups because I knew character 7 and character 9 didn't get along. It also helped to keep track of the sprites in case I wanted to change them in the future. I timed them all up and created a new animation clip out of each one. Next we set up the animator component for the character and give it a few parameters so we can control it from in the code. I've put here a boolean is moving for whether the idle or walk animation should play and two floats right and up for which direction the character is facing. The animation transitions will then be triggered according to the value of those parameters. So for this transition here, if the character is in its front idle animation and if is moving is true and up is less than zero, the character is walking downwards and the animator will transition to its front walk animation. I know this stuff's usually just brushed past in devlogs, but after coming from working with animations in the basic engine I built in the lightweight Java game library a few years ago, seeing this animator view was so exciting, so I wanted to talk about it this time. After setting the rest of the transitions in the animator, it's time to actually change those values in the code. This bit of code just checks the distance between the position of the character sprite and where it's heading to see if it's moving or not and sets the is moving boolean to true or false to let the animator know whether to play the idle or walking animations. This one sets the right float value to the raw value of the player's horizontal input, which will either be negative 1 or 1 for left or right. The mirror character is given the negative of that value. And the same goes for the vertical directions. And when the player stops inputting any directions, the up and right values are reset to zero. I slapped together a test level with the assets I'd made, because why'd I spend all that time making them if I'm just going to test the character animations in an empty room? Okay, so one of them's stuck in an idle animation and the other one's just sliding around. And now I have to figure out what- oh, hang on. It's- oh. Well, I should've just quit while I was ahead. The mirror character wasn't animating because I just hadn't added the controller to its animator component. I wish Unity had just told me that. Okay, so one of them's stuck in an idle animation and the other one's just sliding around. Whoa, my voice sounds weird. At least they're both technically animating this time. But how to get it to- oh, there we go. Well, I'm quitting while I'm ahead. You're not getting me again, game. Luckily this was one of those mistakes that aren't too hard to find. I was accidentally telling the animator that the character was moving when it wasn't and wasn't when it was. All I had to do was swap this less than to a greater than. It felt so good seeing something other than the squares I had before. But then I noticed the characters started to rollerblade if I moved them too quickly. Heh, <laughs> look at them sliding around. We can see in the animator view that the characters walk animations aren't being played fully and keep skipping every time they enter a new grid cell. It was the cliche easy to miss on by default setting in the animator that allows animations to transition to themselves, so the animation cycle would reset every time the character moved. After turning that off for every transition to the walking animation states, the character's basic walk and idle animations were finally working.
Then I was having a busy semester at uni and lost all motivation to do any coding recreationally. Pixel art was different enough at least, so I decided to add some more sprites into the game. I realised I didn't have a simple wall sprite which would help when creating some test levels, so I decided to start with that. I drew a few different types of walls to see what I'd like, focusing for now on the shape and shading rather than the colours. I then drew a few more walls for good measure. And then just like one or two more. And then maybe another one after that. Until I had a whole page of walls. At this point I couldn't justify drawing any more walls, but I didn't want to work on any logic or mechanics either. So I just put the game down for a few months. But then the semester was over and I came back ready to get into some coding again. I wanted to work on the undo feature. I knew it would be a feature in the game, but it would also help a lot during development. This is the way I managed it at the time, which I later figured out wouldn't scale, but it wasn't too bad to refactor later on. I created a level manager class that would keep track of all level states. It had an inner level state class that stores the position of the character and mirror character when instantiated. When the player makes a move, the player controller class alerts the level manager class, which creates a new level state object and adds it to an array list of all moves. Check out my pro level debugging tools. If the player presses Z, the level manager sets the character's positions to their positions in the previous state. Sometimes bugs are interesting. Like what is going on here? I don't even remember. Anyway, I was able to eventually get it to this point. That jumping is me clicking undo by the way. Although I am cheating here because I knew it wasn't working with the mirror character, so I'm specifically choosing paths that mean the mirror character won't move. I had it where they would both undo, but only one at a time. Because both characters call on move when they move, the level manager makes two level state objects, one for each character's moves, so pressing undo just alternates between their moves. To fix that, I just moved all input handling code to the level manager object instead of one for each of the character objects. That way I only need to check if at least one of the characters move before calling on move and adding a new level state to the list. This is what I ended up with. Obviously there's no feedback to the user since I'm trying to stay focused on the logic rather than the game juice, but it was all working as intended. Alright, that's all for this update. In the next one I'll be adding some particle effects, a move counter, and deciding what happens when a character walks into another character. Oh, and changing the overall art theme, again. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and the development process so far. See ya folks, have a good one.